Education Assistant at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City. And I'm so excited to talk to you today about our new UU of the week, Annie Bizzle Jordan Willis. She was born on May 30th, 1893 in Lewisburg, North Carolina. Miss Annie was a teacher and spent most of her life running a school in Virginia, which gave African American children equal access to a quality education long before Brown versus the Board of Education. Miss Annie's father, Joseph Fletcher Jordan, was a Presbyterian minister, but he struggled with the concepts like hell and eternal punishment so much that he quit his job. But then he became a universalist because they believed that every person is universally saved. Jordan was one of the first African-American universalist ministers in America. In 1904, Annie B. Jordan and her father moved with the rest of their family to Suffolk, Virginia, where her father took over control of the Suffolk Normal Training School. Annie B. Jordan started teaching in that school when she was a teenager and just never left. Annie married, had a daughter, and eventually separated from her husband. When her father passed away, Miss Annie took control of the school. The Jordan Normal Training School, as it was later renamed, started as a universalist mission school to educate African-American children in that community who were not allowed to attend neighborhood schools due to segregation. We remember that segregation meant separate. Everything was separate for black and white Americans from schools to housing to health care. Everything was supposed to be equal, but this was never the case. But the Jordan Normal Training School offered a quality education to all children and actually became a model of integration with both black and white students more than 30 years before public schools were forced to integrate. And it was a wonderful school. Many graduates went on to become very successful and important members of their community. This reminds us that one good teacher can change the world. Miss Annie stayed at the school through many changes in names and vision. The Universalist Church leadership in Boston decided that they wanted to offer more to the community in Virginia like healthcare and job training. They were well-intentioned but forced these changes on Miss Annie without even asking her. This is an unfortunately a solid example of white supremacy when the white male leadership who were far away in Boston made sweeping decisions without the input from a woman of color who was actually running the school in Virginia. As a result, the school suffered and so did Miss Annie's relationship with the church. But she persevered and kept teaching even though the number of grades offered kept shrinking, eventually only Miss Annie's kindergarten class remained. When the Universalists who favored long-term mission projects like the school merged with the Unitarians who preferred short-term mission work, the school lost even more of its support. But Annie B. Jordan Willis kept the school open with fundraising until she retired in 1974. Remember, her family first became involved with the school 70 years before that. Her last words to her successor at the school were, watch out for my children. The school lasted seven more years after her death. Annie B. Jordan Willis was a universalist and a gifted educator. She was remembered most fondly for her loving and kind nature and firm commitment to anti-racism and providing equal opportunity to all children. And I'm so happy to add her to our UU of the Week collection.